This is the Algebra 1, Module 1, Topic 1, Quiz Corrections. In order to receive credit for your corrections, you have to write down everything that I put on this paper. Please make sure that your name is on it as well as your class period is marked. So number one right here, it says sketch a graph of a function that is linear, continuous, increasing, and with an x-intercept of negative two, zero. So we have to make sure we fit all of that criteria on our graph. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I have my x-intercept at negative two, zero. So that would be this point right here. Linear means it's gonna be a straight line. Continuous means that it's going to be a connected line, not just points. And increasing means it's going up from left to right. So it would look something like this. All of those things are met for my graph right here. Number two. Number two says the graph of the quadratic function f is shown on the grid. The coordinates of the x-intercepts, y-intercept, and vertex are integers. What is the maximum value of f? So that's talking about a, speci a specific point, right? Maximum means it's the highest point on this graph. The highest point of this graph is right here. And all I need to do is write the ordered pair for that point. So my x value for that point is 5. And my y value for that point is 9. So my maximum is 5, 9. Number three, which characteristics best describe this graph? Select all that apply. Well, I see that this graph is kind of like an L shape. So it's not quadratic. Quadratic would be a U shape. It is exponential. It is not linear because it is curved. as a curve right here. It is not discrete because all the points are connected. It is continuous. And going from left to right, my line is going down. So it is decreasing. Number four. It says a gas station owner calculates the cost of the gasoline he needs to purchase for the year and records it on the graph below. Which answer choice best describes the domain and range of the function in this situation? So if we look at our graph, remember domain is your x values, all possible x values, and your range is all possible y values. So looking at my x values, it starts at zero, and since this line is going up, it has an arrow, which means it's gonna continue on forever. That means my x values are gonna be everything greater than or equal to zero. So right here it says my domain, all real numbers is greater than or equal to zero. That's true. B says my domain is all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. That part's true but it says that it has to be less than 13, which is wrong. It's going on forever. So B is out. C says the domain is all real numbers. That is not true because it starts at zero. D says the domain is all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. That part's true. And less than 50. That part is not true. So the answer is a. Just to look, let's go ahead and look at our range. Our range starts at zero and it goes on forever upwards. So that means our domain has to be all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Number five, it says the graph of qu the quadratic function r is shown on the grid. Which answer choice best represents the range? Remember when we're talking about range, we're talking about our y values our y value, so let's get rid of anything that's not talking about y. I can get rid of a. It has an x, so domain is y values. So looking at my y values of this graph, I notice that this right here is the highest y value I'm going to have. 
So my highest y value is six, and every other y value is going to be less than six. It's going to continue on forever because there's arrows at the end. So I know y is going to be less than or equal to, because this point is on six. So my answer is C. Number six. Number six says the graph of quadratic function n is shown on the grid. Which, which answer choice best represents the domain of n? So remember, domain is talking about our x values, so we can get rid of anything that's not talking about our x values. So if we look at our x values on our graph, I notice that there's an x value on every point of this graph, right? And then I have arrows that are going on forever. That means the x values are gonna be every point. The x values are gonna continue on forever. So my answer is all real numbers. These arrows means that they can continue going. The packet printed weird, so we're going to go to number 10. That's the next page. Arlene begins a test with a possible total of 80 points. She loses two points for every question she answers incorrectly. Identify the y-intercept and explain what it means in the problem situation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify what my y-intercept is. Remember, your y-intercept is where your line crosses your y-axis. So this is my y-intercept. So just knowing that 80 is my y-intercept, I can get rid of some answer choices. I can get rid of this first option where it says the y-intercept is 40 and as well as the second one. So now I got a 50-50 shot. The next part says this means there were 80 incorrect answers to score zero points and the last one says there were zero incorrect answers to score 80 points. Well, this zero right here, this is representing the number of incorrect answers, and this 80 is representing the total number of points. So the answer is this last one here at the bottom. Zero incorrect answers to score 80 points. They are starting with 80 points. Number 11 says Arlene begins a test with a possible 80 points. She loses two points for every question she answers incorrectly. The graph represents the situation. Is the graph increasing, decreasing, or both increasing and decreasing, or is it constant? Well, if I look from left to right, going left to right, my line is going down. So that means it is decreasing. On the back of that page, we actually have questions seven, eight, and nine. So we're gonna go to question seven. Question seven says, which table shows y as a function of x? Remember, a function means you cannot or don't repeat x's. We don't repeat our x's. So looking at our tables, if it repeats an x, it is not a function. So right here, all these x's are being repeated. So a is not a function. B, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. That looks good. C, we have 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 9. Those are repeating, so it's not a function. And D, we have 0, 0. Those repeat, so it's not a function. So my answer is B. Question seven, I'm sorry, question eight. It says determine whether the function has an absolute minimum or a max, absolute maximum. And then they give us the function. It says f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. So, what I would do, if you do not know, I would go to my calculator, I would add a graph, and I would just type this in. x squared plus 2x 
minus three. I would hit enter and it would pop up the graph. So I see my point is down here. That is a minimum. That is the smallest point. It looks like this. That is the smallest point that's on my graph. Because now all my other points have to be greater than that point. So that function gives us a minimum. And then last but not least, question nine, it says map each function to its correct graph. They gave us three equate or three functions and we need to figure out which graph matches those functions. So the first one, let's say you don't understand or you don't remember the format for each of the functions. You can use your calculator. So I'm gonna go back to my calculator and I'm gonna type in this function into a graph and see what it looks like. So negative x squared plus two, hit enter. Oh, it gives me a U shape. That's a quadratic function. So the graph that matches that is right here, graph C. I'm gonna do the same thing with the next function. I have three to the x power. I hit enter. Oh, it gives me an exponential graph. So that is graph B. Last but not least, we already know which one this has to be, but I'm still gonna show you. If I add this graph on my calculator, I would have x minus three, and it gives me a straight line, a linear graph, that is graph A. Remember, in order to receive credit for your corrections, you must complete all the work I've done in this packet.